Sunday morning or in, in our homes and in our neighborhoods. And then the second is the community of Chestermere. How are we influencing this community, caring for it in very practical sorts of ways? The third value is generosity, and that is that, that we believe that God has given to us all that he has and all that he is. And so out of that abundance, we want to respond uh, by giving back, whether that's with our time, our talents, our treasures, even sometimes just with our listening ear, uh, we want to be generous. And then the last is worship, and that is that we believe we have a great God who has created all things. And so out of that, we want to respond, respond with action, respond with our words back towards God, but out towards his creation as well. Again, we're glad that you've decided to join us this morning. I hope you can find a chair and uh, that you can experience God's story uh, this morning. Well, welcome everybody uh, to Lake Ridge this, this, this morning. Uh, welcome everybody online who is watching and for everybody here. It is, it is a treat and an honor to be here with you. We believe that Jesus is doing something. And we believe that all the more when things are tough, when things are chaotic, when things are strange, when things are absurd, we just think that Jesus is in the midst of, of that. that. That's a promise that we have from the dawn of time. And now it's a promise that we get to stand on here, here now too. Hey, I have a few uh, quick announcements just before we begin uh, about the COVID process. Uh, as you know, there have been some clampdowns happening uh, in the province. And we spent the week trying to work through what some of those mean for us. And we're happy to say that we are kind of within the bounds of what the province is setting. And we're going to continue to hold firm to what the province is, is setting because there are COVID cases just spiking all over the place. So far, we are very happy to, as far as we understand, uh, that people have been safe coming to Lake Ridge here. And so I just want to thank everybody for continuing to do things like wearing masks and social distancing and, and all of that stuff. Um, Yes, I, th I think that's showing amazing courage in, in our community. Hey, uh, just a reminder, that is our entrance door over there, and we're going to encourage people to leave out that other door. In the process, you get to tour the school on your way out through the exit door, so that's good. Um, you can loop through the hall hallway over there. We used to kind of keep things separated, but, things, but people weren't really following those separation things. So we're going to trust that you just follow uh, social distancing. And if you're able to, to do that, I think we are going to be good. Um, you can wear a mask if you're singing and uh, moving around. Uh, and um, so thank you for, for doing, doing that. Uh, and masks can be removed if, if you are seated. Uh, there, are, there have been restrictions in terms of public singing, and we've been trying to interpret what that, what that looks, looks like. So if you are singing, please wear your mask or even hum under your mask. Um, I actually spoke at a church a few weeks ago, and they had created, I kid you not, a, like a plexiglass barrier that went through the entire front of the space to keep separate the people on, uh, who were up front singing and those there, and it was very, very odd to speak be, be behind plexiglass. So we have like face masks and, and that sort of thing. And so we are, we are just gonna, gonna keep adjusting that until we uh, got it right. Also, please stay with your kids and if your kids can stay with, with your families too during worship. But then we do have uh, kids time this, this, this morning. And so we are very, very grateful for Sam and Jennifer for continuing to carry on kids ministry during even these, these difficult times. Uh, I, I, I was away last week, had a wonderful little vacation in the mountains. We just went and just took in snow and beautiful things. Uh, and this week, Evan and Tara and their families are, are away. And so hopefully you two are able to find ways of finding peace and rest even in this, in this crazy season. There's a lot to share this morning as we start a new sermon series and as we lead up into Advent. And so, but we just believe that God is here with us and God's spirit is working in us. And so may we open our eyes this morning to see. Would you stand with me if you, if you so feel, feel inclined and uh, join us in worship this, this morning. Welcome. Welcome to church. Good morning. It's good to see you guys. We're going to sing a few songs that we've probably never done before. The first one, I think the melody and the first verse you'll be very familiar with. And I think you'll pick it up. And I know it's difficult to sing with masks on. But I hope that, uh, that you identify with the, with the music, with the songs today. And that uh, we can 
we can express what we feel to our Lord, even even through our hearts, without saying anything, or maybe through humming. Uh, and uh, let's worship him because he is worthy. Amen? And this is what this song is about. He is worthy. Thanks. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, now we trust every moment, all our days, God be praised, oh God be praised. Our God is able. Our God is able. He will never fail. He is almighty God. 
greater than all we see, greater than all we ask. He has done great things, lifted up, defeated the grave, raised to life. Our God is able, in His name we've overcome. For the Lord, our God is able. Our God is with us. God is with us. He is on our side. He will make a way. Far above all we above all we hope He has done great things let's sing it out lifted up defeated the grave raised to life our God is able in His name we've overcome for the Lord our God is able God is with us. He will go before. You never leave us. You never leave us. Our God is for us. He has opened us. Never fail us. You never fail us. Lift it up. Feed it the grave. Raise to life. Our God is able, in His name we've overcome, for the Lord our God is able, for the Lord our God is able, for the Lord our God is able. Here's a new song. Um, you can sit down if you like. It would be okay. You could stand, whatever you want to do. Um, and this is a great song about finding our identity. And I think that uh, um, sometimes we're trying to find who we are determining by, by our success, by how much money we have maybe. Or maybe who our friends are, how good looking we are, or anything like that. And I think placing our value and, and our identity in all those things um, is very misleading. In the end, um, we are God's children. And our identity and our self-worth comes from that. And I hope that you know that... Um, you are his child, and you are worth more than anything to him. And I want to sing about that today. I was lost, but he brought me, he know his love for me, oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, he's free indeed, 
I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Free at last, he has ransomed me. His grace runs deep. Well, I was a slave to see Jesus die. Yes, he died for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God, yes I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am who you say I am. The sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I am a child of God. Yes, I am in my father's house. In my father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. It's an oldie, it's an oldie but a goodie. I think uh, some of you will know it. I really hope you're not desperate to the point where you, you don't see where you can go. You don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. But if you're feeling in any way that there's no breathing room anymore, I just want to tell you that you can breathe on him. Rest on him. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. The very word spoken to me. And I for you and I I'm lost without you try to hum this with me if you can this is the air I breathe This is the air I breathe, your holy presence living in me. This is the 
This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very role spoken to me. And I Desperate for you, and I'm, I'm lost without you, and I'm, I'm desperate for you. without you I'm lost without you This is the air I breathe This is the air Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. We thank you, Lord, for everyone here today. We thank you, Lord, that we're healthy and we're standing strong. Lord, that we can believe in a God that's there for us. We can believe in a God that's always there in thick and thin, no matter what's going on in our lives. We thank you, Lord, that we can rely on you. And you are, you are our helper. You are our healer. You are our provider. So God, we just want to thank you for, for what you've done. I pray our hearts will be open and for ever, whatever else you want to speak to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, my name is Shay. This is Georgia, who has way too much of a fig bar in her mouth right now, so we'll just watch that as I'm up here. <laughs> um, whether you're joining us online from home today or in church, it's just really nice to be able to connect together like this, and I feel really blessed by, by all of you. So uh, let's dig into the word. We're going to read from Psalm 139 today, verses 1 to 18. O oh Lord, you have examined my heart, and you know everything about me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say before I even say it, Lord. Oh, there's my mask. There you go. You have that. <laughs> you go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's too great for me to understand. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride on the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night. But even in darkness, I cannot hide from you. To you, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous, how well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of the sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me.
at all. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Um, good morning, everybody at home and wrapped up warm wherever you are. It's uh, minus seven degrees outside here today. In Qualicum Beach, it's plus seven. <clears throat> the reason I'm saying is that we actually have somebody who comes every week from Qualicum Beach. Isn't that cool? Um, for anybody who doesn't know me, I'm Marilyn. If you are new to Lakeridge, we have some cards, and we'd love for you to fill them out so that we can actually get to know you. Um, these will be on the table at the back. Um, it's hard for me to say this, but um, not everybody has good days. We all have good days and bad days, some more so than others, and um, some struggling. We don't want you to struggle alone. We have a little teeny tiny card, but it has a big heart behind it. There are people here who have the wisdom that you can reach out to. There are people, the pastors, who are there to help us spiritually. And there are people who can just be a friend. So if you feel like connecting with somebody, please just grab one of these. There's a connection through the Lake Ridge uh, website and you can connect with them that way. And please do, don't struggle alone. Thanks, Marilyn. <clears throat> Marilyn's part of our leadership team. My name's Jack, I'm uh, also on the leadership team and kind of in training to take over the, the uh, financial side of the, and looking at that. Yeah, thanks, Patrick. Um, so uh, Eric's gonna come up in a couple minutes and talk about youth. Uh, but just wanted to put a friendly reminder out there for our semi-annual uh, meeting that we've got. We're a little bit delayed this year because of all the fun that we've been having with COVID. And, uh, but uh, we're going to have a family gathering next Sunday after church. Uh, try and keep it as short as possible. And uh, it's kind of that mid-year check we're going to manage as a family meeting. Um, it's where we get some short updates from uh, and hear from our pastors and uh, probably get a little bit more understanding all the things that they've been involved with over these uh, past eight months. Uh, I know from leadership, it uh, I'm always just kind of in shock at everything that they that they're doing uh, and helping uh, our uh, community both here at Lake Ridge and in Chestermere uh, move ahead. Uh, we'll do a little bit of a financial uh, report and uh, just talk about where we're at with our finances and and we'll have actually I think. Uh, this week we'll have the a lot of the information posted on our uh, Lake Ridge page so that you can have a look at that and and, uh, and when we get to the meeting we'll you know talk about a few things how much uh, COVID's impacted us and and uh, and what that looks like for us. Um, I encourage you to sign up for church um, if you're going to uh, going to be here uh, to join or watch online as well. So for the folks online. Um, we'll continue uh, to go online after. Um, I did want to kind of mention uh, that we are so grateful here at Lake Ridge um, for your continued support. Uh, it's really how we love our city, uh, and our, our world, and, and our ministries that we have going on. Uh, and it's But at the end of the day, uh, it's really in your hearts uh, to give. Uh, and we really, uh, we really do encourage you to think about that. I know that uh, my story, I've, I've thought about that uh, over the years and it's, it's changed quite a bit. Um, and uh, I can talk about that uh, some other time if you're interested. Um, but really, it's in your heart to give. Uh, we do have the offering box in the back uh, and you can do cash, check, debit, credit. Uh, we have the machine back there for doing uh, some of those fancy things. Uh, we do do the e-transfer, um, and I found that for myself very quick and easy to do. Uh, and they don't even charge a, a transfer fee, so it's it's a it's a great one to do. And that's just to to, uh, to the giving at uh, LakeRidgeCommunity.com, or you can set up monthly gifts or go through Canada Helps. And I know uh, quite a few people uh, utilize Canada Helps as well, uh, and that's the other way to give. Um, and I think that's it for, for our, the main announcements. Eric's going to come up, and we've got Eric back. Woo! He's here. Now for the best part of the service.
youth announcements. <laughs> um, well, I'm excited because this Tuesday we're going to be running youth, and just like every other Tuesday we're going to be running youth, but this Tuesday is special because my birthday is also on that Tuesday, so... Uh, no, I don't, I, I'm doing stuff for myself, so <laughs> um, if you, uh, yeah, so on Tuesday, if, uh, uh, just regular youth night on Tuesday, so if you sign up, lakeridgecommunity.com slash youth, all of that stuff is there, and it's uh, available for anyone between the ages of, or grades 6 to 12, and uh, the sign up is online um, from 7 to 9 p.m. at Camp Chestermere. Finally, there is another youth announcement on Saturday. We're doing like a hot wings challenge. If any of you have seen the YouTube uh, uh, channel called Hot Ones, basically you're just kind of having progressively spicier hot wings and you watch um, everyone progressively get more and more teary-eyed and then uh, turn into real tears and crying and all that kind of stuff. And that I thought that sounded fun. So... Um, uh, we're going to cry together as a youth group um, as we eat progressively hotter uh, chicken wings. So, um, yeah, Saturday, 7 to 9. That's actually a high school-only event. Um, yeah, so grade 9 to 12 are invited to the um, Hot Ones event next Saturday. And then we're going to have a whole bunch of fun things planned in December, like Mall Hunt and Zoo Lights and all these different things that are coming. So I'm super excited. But that's it for the youth announcement. Awesome. Oh, I think I might, oh yeah, I might have a microphone on there. Hey, uh, we're going to dismiss our children. Uh, we love our kids, and we just think that they are going through crazy things too. And so we love them, and we especially love our children's ministry leaders, uh, Sam and Jen, who are just uh, doing amazing work. So Sam's at the back, and I want to just let you know a few things. Uh, we have uh, children's ministry for age four through to grade six. Uh, and then kids are to, to wear a mask if they are going back to children's ministry this morning. Uh, there's a way to sanitize, uh, so be sure to do that on your way out. And afterwards, we encourage parents to pick up their children after, afterwards too. So uh, right after the service, just go out and find them. So I'm going to pray for our children, and then they're going to be heading out. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning, for this worship. Thank you that children here at Lake Ridge will grow up knowing what it is to have these songs in their heart, that, th that we love you and that you love us. Lord, I pray that these truths would sink deep and that they would be something that would carry them through all the complexities of this life, that they would know what trust in you looks like. And so I pray that you would bless them, especially during this crazy season. And may they go and uh, experience even more of hearing, hearing the story of, of Jesus and uh, growing together in friendship. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Kids, you can head out in that direction. Awesome. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know if you noticed, Evelyn was up here this morning. She really wants to be part of the worship team. So she has been, uh, so, so she joined us this morning, and I don't know if you could hear her, but I think it added, added the, the much-needed adjustment to uh, listening to Steve, right? So uh, it, was, it was good, it was good. Now we're just have, having a bit of fun, so thank you. Hey, we are starting a new sermon series, and the sermon series is called Treasure. And we are uh, excited about this. I'm, I'm excited about this. Uh, it is a sermon series that is exploring uh, everything about this, not Preston, but everything about your body, heart, mind, soul. There's a, there's a whole lot going on in this, and it's, and it's not always evident as to maybe what is going on, but we're going to name a few things over the next while, and it's that our whole body is a treasure, that God has given you something. God, God made this. He knows this. He knows how it works. He knows what it does. Your body is very special to God. Your body and all that happens in your body needs care. It needs a special care. And so I'm grateful that Marilyn today showed our little care card because, uh, because this is an important thing for us. And it's something that we're going to be talking a lot more throughout this winter season is what it is to care for this. And how we can even do a sermon series about our body and our mind 
and our soul. The way we eat, the way we rest, the way we play, the way we relate, the way we mourn, the way we celebrate, the way we work, all these things happen in this body that God has given us. We're going to explore what that means. The series is more than just a how to take care of your body. You you aren't going to hear a whole lot of exercise tips from Preston, okay? That is not what this is about. It's to open up a bigger imagination for what God is doing inside of you. It's a series about God, actually, and about God's relationship to you, what God thinks about you, and what God's doing in your body, in this finite body that you've been given. A body that gets sick, a body that needs to sleep, a body that has dreams, a body that has hopes, and it's all wrapped up in a nice little package called you, right? There's a lot going on here. I think the Bible has a lot to say about it. When we understand our bodies in this light and what Jesus is doing in these bodies, then it also helps us understand what this is. During this pandemic, we're asking a lot of questions as to what church is, what following Jesus is, what loving our city is. We're getting back to some basics here, but sometimes when we get back to basics, sometimes it's like stepping into a stream. Have, have you ever read a book 10 years later and it feels like you've never read that book before? <laughs> it's because life is moving and you step into it twice. And sometimes I think what this pandemic is doing is it's making us pause and ask some big questions about what's true about us the world around us. And right now, I think God's asking us to reflect on what's happening here inside of us. About a year ago, I was planning a similar series about our body, and it all got shelved along with most of the things we were planning for uh, because it didn't seem appropriate or we just had to talk about a whole bunch of other things. But since then, I've realized that this series that we're going to be doing on treasure, taking care of the mind and the body that God gave us, is exactly what God might be wanting to talk to us about right now. The journey into scripture. Our bodies are facing with a virus that is making us think about how fragile we are. Uh, This virus is taking away some of our freedoms and the things we used to do and the places we used to go and the people we used to see. That's limited for us. And And then our bodies are facing deep inside, we're facing anxiety and fear, we doubt, we wonder. Some are struggling with relationships. Others are wondering if they should even keep living at all. Others are facing a dark winter ahead of us. We're a month away from the darkest time of the year. And so these questions are probably more apropos now than they've ever been for us as a community, and I'm grateful that we're going to be taking it now more than ever. All the chemicals in you, all the hormones in you, all the things you're thinking about right now, they matter to God, and you matter to God. And we're going to elevate this. We're going to learn why this is actually the most Christian thing to do. (laughs) Sometimes we think the Christian thing is to to go off into the ether or go to the top of a mountain, and that's where we meet Jesus. But actually, we're meeting Jesus in this, in this limited package called you, and it's a good thing. Our series will be in two parts, actually. We're going to be talking about treasure for the next, this Sunday and next Sunday, and then we're going to take a little intermission and do Advent. But Advent's going to carry on a little bit with this theme as we talk about Jesus being the light of the world, what it means for Jesus, the light of Jesus, to come into our world, and what it means to participate in being this creative light in the world, even in this limited thing we call our bodies. And then we're going to pick up in the new year, we're going to be talking a whole lot about care. It's going to be a big focus for this winter. We've been actually building a whole lot of things leading up to this winter that we hope we'll be able to care for you care for our community, care for our youth. There's a whole bunch of things that we're going to be doing around care. So I hope that you start to to settle into this journey with us. There's a photo on our fridge, and Ivy noticed it the other day. Ivy's our three-year-old, and she noticed it, and she said, where am I in this photo? It was all the people she loved. It was me, it was her mom, Kelly, it was her uncle, Dan, and Scotia was, like, small, but Ivy hadn't entered the picture yet. She was out of it, and And her brain couldn't quite get around this, that she did not exist yet. You see, in her three-year-old mind, she has always existed, right? She, it's always Ivy all the time, right? And she's only now beginning to get a sense that outside of Ivy is a world that has carried on before her uh, and after her. She's trying to make sense of things. She cannot get her head around the fact that I came out of Grandma Brenda, right? She's like, you came out of Grandma Brenda. Like, yes, and Grandma Brenda came out of Grandma Ramona. 
And she's like, but she's so old. How can she come out? Anyway, it's fun. Kids are asking all these really good questions about who came out of who, and we're talking about these things, right? The conversation about fluids in our home is a normal thing, right? Bodily fluids, bodily functions, this is part of it. And then something happens when we get older, probably, I'm probably mostly grateful for this, that we talk less about those things, right? We do. I'm grateful for it. Until we get much older, and then we talk about it more. We talk about knees and hips and things, and then again, again later, right? Our bodies are a real function. They're important to us. She always wants to know all these things. This longing from where we came from, who we are, what we're made of. These might be questions for my three-year-old, but they're actually questions that we have come to some conclusions on. But they're questions that actually humans have been wrestling with for a long, long time. And here's one thing that we are learning as Christians is that we are created people. You were made. You weren't, and then you were. There's a photo without you in it, and then one day there's a photo with you in it. You weren't here, and now you are. The book of Genesis, it sets out this story of God's creative work in a world that God made for you then to thrive in and live in relationship with God. Your body is actually evidence of your createdness. Squeeze, 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 squeeze a part of it. Give it a good squeeze and think of it as something that was made. Something that wasn't and now it is. You did not make your body. You might give credit to your mom and dad. And they might give credit to their grandparents. But really, the fundamental fact is you did not make you. <laughs> I remember once when I was a teenager, my dad and I were going back and forth about something and he was putting some new responsibility upon me, which, which was good. He taught me a lot about responsibility. And then I said to him, I said, in my frustration, I said, I didn't choose to be here. You made me here. I was trying to get out of something. Those, that logic did not fly with that. It just did, it got me nowhere. He's like, yeah, you are here. You better get, get to it, right? I love it. We were made. What we think about what this means will change what we do with it, will change how we treat it, will change how we care for it, and will change how we see the createdness in everybody else. It's very important. It's a very theological thing to be doing. So I've been doing a lot of reading about this. Follow along with this. Here's some interesting things about your body. One thing you'll discover about your body is that it can do a bunch of things. And it can actually do a lot of things. And it's pretty amazing if you think about it. You can sense the world around you. You can gather in information through your eyes, your ears. And then you, and your brain takes all that information and it can create thoughts about what's going on. And then your brain with these senses and thoughts can then go out into the world and find what it needs to sustain this package. And it can move around the world. It can, it can digest things. It gets flushed with hormones. And it will drop everything for really good chocolate cake, right? This is what our body does. It will fight off a horde to save a child and to save somebody we love. In your body, you can talk to God, you can observe a sunrise, and you can carry the lyrics of literally a million songs, and nobody knows how this is possible, right? And some of those songs probably get stuck in your head, like the song, it's a small world after all. I'm sorry, I, 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 I did that. I said this, it's a small world after all, and now you are going to have that. I bet on Friday of this week, you will still be singing that, and you'll remember this moment. Your body is amazing at absorbing all of this information. You can even hold memories of a first kiss. Oh, see, and you're thinking back now, right? Jack, look at him getting red over there. He just had a good, good memory, didn't he? <laughs> oh, you're singing another song. There we go. The song that never ends. Yeah, I know, right? So listen, your brain is suddenly doing all these amazing things. But then, once we discover how amazing our body is, then we discover how frail and fragile it is at the same sense. It can be diseased. It can feel hard things, and then it can feel amazing things, and it can feel both those things at the same time. It can hurt others and be hurt itself. My body will break and eventually break down. It will develop neurotic problems. If you spend time with me, you'll know. I got a bunch of them, right? It will hold on to lies, and it will eventually be over. Your body is this amazing, mysterious thing. 
Your body actually has limits, literally. There's a place where my body ends, and then the world around me begins, and then maybe somebody else's body begins beyond that. There's actually a liminal limit to my body. And then we realize that other people around us are experiencing things too, and they're in the room too, and they're, they're experiencing a body and what it is to be embodied. You can get pretty philosophical pretty quickly about this, right? We cannot be everywhere at all times, and I'm a limited resource. There's only so much that this body is going to be able to do and can do in any given moment. No matter how much I demand of it, there's a limit to my body. I do not know everything, and even when I do know something, I forget those things, right? So there's a limit even to what my body can hold on to and the ideas I can carry with me into this world. And then think about how alien your body is to the world around it. You can't live in space. You can't live in the ocean. You can't live underground. You can't live up in the ether a, f uh, a few thousand feet, right? There's this l limited space that you can live. And you can't really live in a desert or maybe in, a, in, in the Arctic tundra. So we, there's a limited space and a place. You can't eat everything you see. There's only certain things that will nutrify your body. And pretty soon you begin to realize that our bodies exist in this very small space. And guess what? The world don't care. I, I, I went to the mountains and there was this loop around a lake. Kelly was just going to sit by the fire and read a book. And I was going to be an adventurer, and it's about a five-kilometer walk around a lake. Pack a bottle of water and some gummy worms or something, and I was off, right? And I go off, and then I saw my first bear sign. It said, you will encounter a bear. I was like, I'm an Albertan. Saw another bear sign, and it was like, you better have pepper spray, or you better turn back. Are you in a group? Turn back now. You know, it was like all these signs. I got about half a kilometer around, and I stopped, and I was like, and there's no cell phone signal. I was like, this bear don't care about me, you know? This, if there's a bear or a cougar here, I am done. Well, let me tell you, everything kicked in right then and there, and I was back to the lodge, right? I was out of there. The world will carry on without you. This is humbling to think about this. We are not the center of this world in a lot of ways. We need outside input into this world. We need to know how to operate in this body, in this world. And the more we think about our bodies, the more it goes. Ask my three-year-old and she will tell you all about the crazy things that her body can and cannot do. So, what is this for? What is this body for? What are my thoughts and emotions for? What are my feelings and hopes and dreams for? What are my thoughts and creative insights? What are my, what are my deepest depressions? What is it for? And this is philosophy class 101 all of a sudden, right? We were asking these questions. Well, David in the Bible thought the, thought the same thing. But he came to a place of such awe and wonderment over his body. And he was fascinated by the very fact that he was here, alive and relating to God. We heard it this morning, but I'm going to read it again from Psalm 139. It says this. And this is for the choir directors. So this would have been a song that people would have sung. And I love that, that that would have been a worship song. It says, O Lord, you've examined my heart and you know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. Isn't that interesting? In a world that really doesn't care. You could be, you could be uh, bear meat. But God sees. God sees you walking one-fifth of the way around a lake and turning back in fear. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I'm at rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm about to say even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and you follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, David says. Too great for me to understand. I can never escape your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you're there. If I go to the grave, you're there. Isn't that interesting? I talked about how liminal people are. <laughs> that we exist in this small little space and time. But David says, no matter where I go, God, the one who made me, is there. I ride, if I ride the wings of the morning, or if I dwell in the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me. Your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me, and the light around me become night. But even in the darkness, I cannot hide from you. 
God's everywhere in this story. To you, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book, every moment laid out before a single day passed. And how precious are your thoughts about me, O God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of the sand, and when I wake up, you are still with me. Exclamation mark. (laughs) This is David. He's coming to terms with the fact that he's limited, but he's trying to say, no matter where I go, whatever happens to me, God is there. And then he says this. He says, you made all the delicate parts. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. He's looking at himself and he's saying, this is pretty cool. (laughs) This is pretty neat. This This is the most complex thing that I can see around me is this created thing. We might not be surprised by complex things. I got a cell phone. You can buy complex things and they work. But here's David who lived in caves and the world around him is dangerous and he's realizing that God gave him the most complex beautiful, functioning, capable thing. And it's a gift to him. And then he says, you watch me. You saw me. How precious are your thoughts about me and you're still with me. He knows that God is always watching him and is available to him. It's a a beautiful picture that God would have precious thoughts about you. That he made you and he carries on. The warranty carries on (laughs) what he gave you. What an amazing thing. God gave him a gift. Do you thank God for your body? Is this part of your your prayers, to thank God for your body? To say thank you. Why don't you look at your hands? Your hands are amazing. They They can do a lot of things, actually. You can touch with them. You can comfort others with them. You can defend yourself with them, right? I'm just joking. I'm no ninja guy. When something's flying at, at you, you can, you, you, you can stop it quickly. Your thoughts and your brain can somehow go through onto your tips of your fingers and type or write or paint. Your hands are used to make things, to feed yourself and others. You can point at other things and gesture. Your hands have 27 bones in them, and they have unique fingerprints. And did you know that about a quarter of your mortar, a quarter of your motor cortex in the human brain is devoted to the muscles in your hands. A quarter of the part of your brain that moves things is devoted to this. Your hands are these really important things. And God made them. And you just picture David looking at them and going, hey guys, these are pretty cool. And they're going, David, what are you into, right? He's standing in awe of it. His relationship with God brought him to a place where he looked at his body anew. And he enjoyed it. And he saw it was great. He was grateful for it. Your body is amazing. God made it, and God made a body, and he gave one to you. When he made you, he said, I'm going to give you a body. It's a gift. It's a treat, because I think wonderful things about you, so I'm going to give you one of these. And you you get to walk around in it. You get to do stuff with it. And I really hope that you'll see it as a treasure. I hope you'll see it as something that I'm giving you, and that you can do things with, and that I'm not leaving you one minute alone. With this. If you want, you can walk with me and I'll show you how to use this body. I'll show you how to put it to good work. I'll show you how to have it do things that you didn't even know it could do in all sorts of crazy circumstances. But I need you to watch me. I need you to see. We sometimes forget what our body is for. There's a whole lot of things out there telling you what your body is for, telling you what your body should be put to, telling you what your body should use its time on. But Jesus, so kindly and so gently, he's showing people in the scripture and reminding them the value of this life. In John 8, there's this story, and we've shared the story a few times, but I'm going to share the story again. And it's a story where Jesus is confronted by these Pharisees, and there's a woman who's been caught in adultery. She'd been sleeping with somebody who she shouldn't. And they caught him in this story. They thought, thought, this is perfect. 
here's this woman, she's done this bad thing. And now we're going to ask Jesus a question. And they had pre-set it up just for him. It says this, Jesus returned to the Mount of Olives. But early the next morning, he was back again at the temple. And the crowd, a crowd soon gathered. And he sat down to, taught them, to teach them. And as he was speaking, the teachers of the religious laws and the Pharisees, they brought a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. They put her in front of the crowd. Teacher, they said, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses says, stone her. What do you say? This is a perfectly good gotcha question. Because if he's a really good teacher, he'd say he would follow the law of Moses. And he'd say, stone her. But the Romans at that time said, no stoning. We do all the killing. We do it on a cross. So you can't stone anybody. That's on our terms. It was, it was a lovely culture to be in, I guarantee. And so you couldn't actually follow this law of Moses because the Romans were stopping it, right? So if he said, don't stone her, then he's siding with the Romans. He's stuck. What does he do? Now notice these people. These people are bringing forward this woman who they probably have on a pile on the ground. They don't care about her body. They don't care about her, what she's going through. And they are the ones who are really quite happy to hold a stone and throw it at her, right? They are quite eager to destroy her body. They have used their bodies to do some destruction. And they're thinking they're doing God's good work by destroying this person's body. So Jesus is caught. Or is he? They were trying to trap him by saying something that they could use against him. But Jesus stooped down and he wrote in the dust with his finger. Some people might wonder what this is. This is a little aside. A lot of people said, what did he write in the dust? And why was he doing that? Here's the interesting thing. On the Sabbath, you could not write on a piece of paper or stone. But you could write in the dust because it's not really considered permanent. It was a little minor thing, and Jesus was really smart. So whatever he is writing, he's showing, I know the law very well. I know exactly what the law is, because I'm only writing in the dust on this particular day, right? So Jesus is like, don't try to corner me as some hack teacher from Galilee. I know exactly what's going on here. <laughs> and they were watching him. They kept demanding an answer. So he stood up and again and said, all right. But let one who has never sinned throw the first stone. And then he stooped down again and wrote in the dust. When his accusers heard this, they slipped away one by one, beginning with the oldest until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with this woman. Jesus called them out. <laughs> and he put himself now suddenly in the crosshairs of the Pharisees. They all wanted to stone her. But he stood in between and he said, I'm going to make an enemy with you all. I'm going to call you out. But I'm going to do it in the most gracious way possible. <laughs> and they disbanded. They left. It was him and it was her left. Then Jesus stood again and said to the woman, where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, neither do I. Go and sin no more. It's this amazing picture. Pharisees, they were there ready to do some damage to a body, to this woman, to get somebody to throw stones at her, to cause some damage to her. And the woman, she probably knew that she was caught, and she was probably expecting that day to be hurt in some way. She didn't value her, her body, perhaps, also. She was expecting that this body was useless. Everybody around her told her this. And then Jesus says in a few words that because we are gods, neither do we use our bodies to throw stones. Nor are we going to be trapped by being killed by stones. But Jesus steps between the accused and the accusers. He says to the woman, go and stop hurting yourself in this life of adultery too. Jesus takes and gives honor to the bodies of all these people. <laughs> that somebody wouldn't use their body to hurt and that this person wouldn't hurt themselves anymore. You see, it's the same God that David is talking about. Jesus is the same one standing here saying, I, I know this woman was formed inside her mother and God sees every single part of her and loves her. And you Pharisees, you don't know either how much God loves you and made you. You, my friends, you do not know. Stop this. Go. You aren't accused. I cover you. Eventually, Jesus would hang on a cross and die in his own body. 
for the sins of all these people. So Jesus steps into this story and then he steps into ours and he is alerting us to the other gift, the treasure of the body that he has given you. That we are not to go around and hurt or be hurters. And that when we are hurt ourselves, that God comes in and he cares for us. The punishment we give or take or the ongoing ways we diminish ourselves and others, the sin that breaks our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and the relation we have with our neighbor, these are all things that Jesus is deeply interested in. And then guess what he does? He comes in wearing a body into the story. He says, God is so interested that I'm going to step in and show you how much God loves your heart, soul, mind, strength, and the relationship you have with that body to your neighbor. I'm going to show you how this body works. Let me take you on a grand tutorial. And he does. Friends, what is going on in your body today? Sometimes what we do when we are talking to people who are going through hard times, we often ask people, where are you carrying this in your body? It's often a weird question that we ask as we are caring for somebody, but people will know immediately, I carry it here. I carry it here. I carry it here. Whatever the it is, we are carrying things. Is your mind in conflict? Are your emotions all over the place? Is your tummy hurting? Are your joints out of whack? Are you so afraid to the point of being nauseous? Are you strangely sad or anxious? Or do you not know why you're actually very happy in this season? These, all that we've talked about this morning, this grand setup for all the places we're going, these are not secondary to the Christian life. Some might be wondering, what kind of sermon is this, Preston, talking about hands and the body? This is actually, some religions do not like the body. In fact, there's, a grand, there's many religions that are very happy to believe we do not have a body, that are just looking for the great hereafter, that our prayers are only existing up in the clouds. But here is the interesting thing. The Christian faith, because of Jesus, gets to the end of religion that is bodiless. And in fact, it says this is an embodied faith. We carry the very person of Jesus via the Holy Spirit in us. We are cleaved to Christ. And we're going to be talking about this. That you carry Jesus in you and that your faith happens here. And here. And here. And here. And here. This is where we work out what our faith looks like. It's worked out when you stack some chairs and you carry a crying child. It's worked out when you have a fight with your spouse and you use words to, to smooth that over. It's worked out when you cook something. It's worked out when you talk to your neighbor from a distance. It's worked out there because Jesus is in all these things. This glitchy human gift you've been given is exactly this. It is a treasure. I hope over this winter that we will all go on a grand journey to discover the treasure of it. And I hope through it that Jesus will show you that there's so much more that you're capable of doing. There's so much more healing and care that can happen inside of you than maybe you've been led to believe. And I think that this will be a season of great growth for us all. But let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, I stand here today as Preston, the guy who once wasn't, and then I was made, and here I am. I've stepped into this world, Jesus, and you know what I've seen. I've seen great things and hard things. I've taken them in, and I'm trying to figure it all out. Jesus, thank you that you've given me this body that I can step into this world with. Thank you for my hands, and a brain that can do stuff with those hands. Lord, I confess that in my body there are all sorts of things going on that I don't understand. There's a sickness around me that gives me anxiety. My brain fills me with such fear sometimes and hopelessness. And I can feel great joy and eat a cookie. There's a lot going on, but the Bible says that you, you have made us and you've made us marvelously. So Jesus, I pray for my community today that we would all know how marvelously we are made. 
and that you are with us and that you always see us. That you are with us no matter where we go and what we do. And we are safe in this body, as frail as it is, in front of you, our maker. So Lord, give us the eyes and imagination to see what you want to take us on. On a journey to step into this world with the bodies you've given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you please stand with me? Friends, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You were woven together, and when God made you, God was really happy about that. God gave you a gift and a treasure in you. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace, because he is always with you, no matter where you go. Amen? Amen. Have a good week, everybody. Thank you for joining us.